Tucker, the national media watch group based in New York. If you missed part of today's show or you'd like to hear previous shows, you can find them on FAIR's website, FAIR.org. The show's engineered by Alex Noyes. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for listening to Counterspin. Support for WDBX comes from Cristado's Cafe, Bakery, and Catering, serving breakfast and lunch all day with items such as egg between sandwiches, biscuits and gravy, homemade soups, deli sandwiches, and more. Cristado's also offers fresh baked goods including cookies, cakes, and pastries, as well as specialty coffee drinks. Catering available for any event. Cristado's Cafe, Bakery, and Catering, open Tuesday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. and Saturday 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at 209 South Illinois Avenue in the Kaleidoscope Mercantile Building, 529-4303. Information on Facebook or at Cristados.com. morning and happy Monday. This is Talk of the Town on WDBX FM Carbondale. I'm Amy Fox. I'm the public relations officer for this city of Carbondale and joined by city manager Gary Williams. We hope you're all enjoying the sunshine out there. It looks like we're going to have a pretty rainy week this week. Unfortunately. I the weather. Yeah, yeah, so I wish you wouldn't have told me that actually. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but uh, lots of things going on in Carbondale this week uh, with the students, SIU moving back, um, some for the first time, mm-hmm. and then also um, all of the public schools uh, do start uh, this week as well. So lots of exciting things going on here in Carbondale. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about a grant that the city of Carbondale recently applied for, and we're going to try to walk you through the steps that we've taken and um, maybe where the city is heading. So, Gary, you've been very instrumental in this this process. Um, we're talking specifically about the BUILD grant, mm-hmm. uh, which is formerly known as the TIGER grant. Um, this is something that the city had applied for um, for the last several years. Tell us a little bit about the program and mm-hmm. why the city felt it was necessary to get involved. Yeah. Um yeah, and maybe even I should back up a little bit, Amy, to tell tell everybody that it's um, you know it's really been a, a long process. Um, the city uh, currently there's an Amtrak station that everybody I'm, I'm sure knows where it's at. It's on uh, South Illinois Avenue um, that was built in 1980, and that facility has a capacity of about 70 people, and we have about 380 people a day just for Amtrak. They use that, and uh, one of the things we added last year was we worked with Greyhound for a couple of years. <clears throat> Greyhound had um, they had bounced around at different locations around the city to pick up and drop off passengers, and it just wasn't you know the best business model. And so uh, we worked with Greyhound to connect them to Amtrak's folks, and um, so now they've been it's probably a year and a half actually that they've been uh, utilizing the Amtrak station, the current station, to do that. They do about eighteen hundred passengers a year people board uh, greyhound buses they have three buses a day um so there's a lot of traffic from that as well and, and over the years we've also added stops for saluki express and rides and uh, jackson county mass transit J- uh, rides currently manages the saluki express service so the building and, and transportation needs in the carbondale countywide and even regionally have evolved dramatically since um, 1980, when that station was built, and it was predominantly an Amtrak station. So you can probably imagine it's 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 greatly undersized. And if you were to drive by there, um, really about any time, and it's certainly any time that there's a train getting ready to board, you see that because you see lots lots of people sitting outside, and it's just it's not the best 
situation for passengers. Uh, and it certainly doesn't encourage people to use public transportation, right? Mm -hmm. So um, immediately north of the Amtrak station, there's a little, there was a green space. We've had a temporary parking lot on that for a couple of years. Um, the city owns that lot, and there was a building there. Most recently, it was called Animal Crackers. Back in the 80s, there was a bar called Merlin's that was there. Um, and it's it, it's been there for quite some time. And um, the city purchased that property, I think, in 2009, 2008, 2009, um, and, and then demolished it. Um, the building had become really blight. It had a lot of problems. But, but it was actually part of this overall plan to someday put ourselves in a position where we could expand that facility. Mm -hmm. So that happened around 2010. And then um, really nothing happened for a few years. And in 2013, um, I was actually at a SIMPO meeting, uh, Southern, Southern Illinois Metropolitan Planning Organization. So following the 2010 census, Carbondale and Marion and the corridor between Carbondale and Marion, specifically Heron and Carterville, four cities, um, there's commercial activity and, and we have a lot of interconnectivity and, and mutual needs on that corridor. So following the 2010 census, the population of those four communities exceeded 50,000, which once you do that, you, you move from a rural designation to an urban designation. And so we were required to form a metropolitan planning organization and we are now an urbanized area so we started having meetings um, among all the various stakeholders different municipalities and you can probably imagine that there was it was quite tense initially <laughs> because communities that were used to competing for resources were now having to work together uh, for a pool of resources so um, although it was in initially I think um, met very apprehensively and, and there was a lot of tension one of the positive benefits that i've seen over the years is that all those communities now are working better together and i think that everybody recognizes now that our transportation needs um really affect all of us so what's good for marion or what's good for carbonyl or, or good for carterville is good for the others so it, it only helps the overall system uh get get stronger so in 2013 um, I was at a meeting and, and there was some master planning going on and, and one of the ideas that, that I brought up on half, half of the city was that um, it would be great to, to continue this plan of having this multimodal station mm -hmm. and, um, and certainly some of the public transit shared that same vision. And so uh, we started having some initial discussions with, with various transits in the area and but what the big thing we did was we reached out to a local architect and and said, "Hey, we've got this plan. It might sound crazy or you know ambitious to some, but uh, I think it makes a lot of sense and um, and it would be a good regional regional project. Um, let's reach out to Amtrak." And so we did, and we reached out to Amtrak to get the ball rolling. And one thing I always have to be careful of is is we've always referred to this as the Amtrak station, mm -hmm. but. Um, the building that we've been working on and we've got a conceptual design of it's 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 a multimodal station mm -hmm. and Amtrak is is isn't the primary user um, it's more of a transit project mm -hmm. and Amtrak would be um, would be a tenant mm -hmm. there um, although a very important tenant um, in the grand scheme of things it's it's not the major user of, of the facility um, but if Amtrak is a tenant we have to conform to specific station programming guidelines and that's one of the things we learned very early in 2013 was that there's a very uh, comprehensive set of standards um, and based on your ridership and based on where you're at and, and, and Amtrak's overall system um, that dictates what level of service you have to provide at your station and so we're in a middle category service and so accordingly we had to design it with certain square footages certain amenities and, and all those things so 2013 came we met with Amtrak met with all their government affairs people and said hey we want to get this ball rolling started working through all the design requirements and you know fast forward a year later we had a really rough sketch of a building that we could then could go to the other users so there's three transit users that are regional and the system rides which serves about 18 counties are based in Harrisburg and they serve the uh, essentially for Williamson County East and then Northeast so they go all the way up to like White Edwards County um, 
South Central Mass Transit, which is just north of Carbondale. Mm -hmm. uh, they cover Perry, Washington County, Randolph County, um, and Monroe County. Um, and then immediately south of us uh, is Shawnee. And Shawnee has five counties, and they do Union, um, Union Johnson, Pulaski, Massac, and um, there's one more county. So uh, collectively, 30 counties are served just by those three transits. We also have Jackson County Mass Transit mm -hmm. that's obviously countywide, and then Saluki Express. So we've got five users, and we started having meetings with those guys to make sure that we all the site was right and we had traffic flow, and we did all the things that we needed to do to make to make sure that we could accommodate all their transportation needs to, to flow people in and out of the center. Um, when we got our conceptual design done, we um, started going down the road of getting federal funding and. Um, and you were correct. You, you touched on it. The, the, there was a program that President Obama uh, initiated in 2008 called TIGER. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an acronym for Transportation Infrastructures uh, Generating Economic Recovery. So was, this was immediately following the recession in, in 28, 2008, I should say. Um, and that expired in 2016. So the last round, round eight, we, we applied for. And we, were, we, didn't, get the, we didn't get the grant. Uh, which isn't unusual because one of the things we saw in Tiger through all the rounds was that there was generally five or six hundred million dollars of funding available, and every year there would be nearly ten billion dollars of requests. So it was extremely, extremely competitive, and the DOT actually did a really good job of spreading the money around through all fifty states. Mm -hmm. um, so it was. It was it, normally when people got awarded grants, it was the third, fourth, fifth time that they were applying. And was the city discouraged, or were you optimistic that this could be done maybe in another year? No, we weren't discouraged at all. We were. We had actually uh, two things we did prior to submitting the grant and finalizing our plans is we uh, spent a day in Normal mm -hmm. with their staff. Uh, Normal has a really wonderful multimodal station downtown. It's actually six floors, but the top wow. five floors are city hall offices. Mm -hmm. um, and then the bottom is, is, uh, is similar to what we're proposing here. And it was a project that really was able to be a catalyst to, to revitalize their downtown. And their downtown is very similar to Carbondale. It's about three quarters of a mile from the edge of campus at ISU. So we spent a day with those guys uh, learning like how they did, how they teed the project up and, and learn more about Tiger. And then we also went down and spent, uh, spent a day with folks in Alton. Alton was awarded a grant probably in the seventh round of Tiger. Um, and they have a wonderful project there that now is um, the, the high speed and high, you have to be careful when you say high-speed rail because in the U.S., at least specifically in Illinois, high-speed rail means a 110-mile-an-hour train, mm -hmm. not a 200-mile bullet train like yeah. most people think <laughs> when they see high-speed rail. But anyways, we, we learned a lot from, from, from both of those, and, and both of those projects were exactly like I was mentioning. It was um, multiple times. Normal is when I always remember. It took them eight years of continual fun, you know, funding requests to, to finally get that Tiger grant, and they had some other revenue sources as well. But So, no, we were not discouraged, and then um, uh, the Obama administration ended, and we thought Tiger was going to end, and we were really surprised last year that they uh, awarded a ninth round, um, and we didn't get that. So, but again, we weren't discouraged. And did you make any tweaks to your original proposal after the the first year or the a second year? A little bit, yeah, a, a little bit. We, um, but overall, the, the grant application was the project hadn't changed. Mm -hmm. So really, the only thing we had changed is some of the narrative, and um, we've had really great political support throughout the process. So. Um, it's again. It's a really competitive process. The Tiger Nine uh, round. There was five hundred million of funding available for nine point five billion dollars of requests. Oh. So it was again extremely, extremely competitive. But you did receive some good news from the the last last go around. Yeah, we did. So one of the things we learned is is in April, we um, we had formed like a year ago. We various factions of the community had talked about this for a number of years, but. We, um, we, we assembled a group of people to, to, um, to do legislative advocacy for the city. Mm -hmm. And so we had uh, somebody from SIU, somebody uh, from SIH, our two biggest employers, two mm -hmm. biggest regional employers, 
um, Chamber of Commerce, uh, and also organized labor, we started having meetings, regular meetings, to talk about each other's legislative priorities. <clears throat> and obviously with our location here, transportation has always been the top of the list. And so in April, we... Um, we organized a, a couple day trip to DC to meet with all of our federal elected officials. Senator Durbin's office set up all these meetings for us, and it was really great to have have them set up meetings with agencies because they certainly uh, have much better access than, than we do. Um, and so, one of the, some of the people we met with were actually at Department of Transportation (DOT), and we actually met with the, the people that had administered the Tiger program for eight years. And um, and we sat down with them and talked a little bit about our grant, and, but talked about some of the challenges in Southern Illinois that faces with transportation. And they gave us some really wonderful feedback on how we could, um, you know, maybe make our grant more competitive and, 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 and more compelling in the argument that, that we present. And then a, a really great benefit uh, that they provided as well was you can do a formal debriefing process. So when we got back about a month later in May, we uh, one of the senior evaluators that actually goes through all the applications, uh, all the grant applications, um, went section by section through the application and gave us uh, very critical feedback on areas that we, they thought we were weak and areas that we were strong and what we can do to get better. But one of the things we learned there is um, – we had early in the process, and it's really important to do this, and, and people that, that are grant writers and uh, understand this, but it's very important to, to develop political support for your project. Mm -hmm. and, and we did a good job of that up front. And uh, one of the things we learned is there was, through the debrief, there was four categories that the evaluators put your applications in, and the top two are highly recommended and recommended. And there were about 450 apps uh, in round nine of mm -hmm. Tiger. And a hundred were highly recommended, and we weren't highly recommended. We were in the second batch. Um, those those recommendations go up to the Secretary of Transportation and her evaluation team, and they make the final decisions. And so that's when the politics gets into it. And so we we had really good support. And so the team, after they evaluated everything, they picked twenty applications mm -hmm. um, to have the evaluators re review, and ours was one of them. And so we had two people on that team that raised their hand for Carbondale and said, hey, we like this, take another look at it, mm -hmm. um, which is great. And I mm -hmm. think that speaks to the advocacy we've done regionally here for a number, not just the city, but our, our partners, partners, our transportation partners as well. And they, they chose 13 out of those 20. Unfortunately, we weren't one of them. But mm -hmm. again, we got really great feedback. And if you were to read this year's application versus last year, I think you'll you, you'll you'll see the changes it's pretty apparent the changes that we made all right we're going to take a short break and then we'll go right back into talking about this multimodal facility possibly coming to carbondale in the near future so we'll be right back in just a few minutes good morning this is alicia with the city of carbondale here to bring you this week's calendar of events on Thursday, August 16, 2018, beginning at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., it's SIU Move-In Day. Thursday, new students move into the city of Carbondale. Please take the time to say welcome to Carbondale for all those who are coming and joining SIU. And on Friday, August 17, 2018, it's move-in day for returning students beginning at 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Please take time to welcome the SIU students back to Carbondale. And also on Thursday, beginning at 12 p.m. The Art Space 304 presents Sandwiches and Strings. Southern Illinois Classical Guitars and Strings and Heartstring Studio will provide a live acoustic performance over the lunch hour. This series is free and open to the public. Bring a lunch and enjoy live classical strings in downtown Carbondale. 
For more information, please call Art Space. And on August 17, 2018, it's SIU's Welcome Fest. Come be a part of the Saluki kickoff events. Welcome Fest will be held on the concourse at SIU Saluki Stadium football field. It begins at 8.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. For more information, call 618-549-2146. And on Sunday, August 19, 2018, SIU Physics Department presents Public Astronomy Observation. This event begins at 8.15 to 9.45 p.m. at 1245 Lincoln Drive, number 483A, on SIU campus. For more information, call the Physics Department at SIU. For information on these events and others, please visit our websites at wdbx.org or carbonatourism.org or you can reach us by phone at 618-457-3228. Thank you and have a great week. Good Monday morning, and thank you for listening to WDBX FM Carbon Deal. This is Talk of the Town, and I am Amy Fox. I'm the Public Relations Officer with the City of Carbondale, and I am chatting with City Manager Gary Williams about an exciting project possibly coming to Carbondale, um, talking about the current home of Amtrak, um, mm-hmm. possibly being transformed into a multimodal facility, not only for Carbondale, but for all of southern Illinois. Um, so really exciting project, and when we last... Um, talked to Gary. Um, We were talking a little bit about the history and how the city of Carbondale and some of our community partners have have gotten us to this current point. And I know within the last month, um, you have once again turned in an application. um, And it's been a really long time coming. So big changes from last year's application to this year's application for the build grant. Yeah. Yeah. And so where I left off was... um it was interesting because when we were in D.C. in April, they had told us that the, 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 the process was probably going to change. And sure enough, we got back, and about 10 days later, they had announced this new funding opportunity. And it's the, and the new acronym is BUILD, and I can't remember it's <laughs> exactly what the BUILD stands for. But um, really, it's truly the TIGER program, um, just with a different name because there's a different administration. So it's better utilizing investments to leverage development. There you build. go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so again, it's a transportation program, and um, they look at innovation, and their multimodal is um, w- something that's very important to them. Um, there's a lot of port projects in it. Um, it's again, it's a transportation it, it, infrastructure uh, funding program, and so um, th- the best news about the build program is unlike the. The previous nine rounds of Tiger that was five to six hundred million dollars of funding that were that was allocated to it. The build has one point five billion in funding uh, this year. So tripling the pool of money uh, with all the feedback we got uh, in early in the year, I think that it, it makes us feel even more confident about our our chances here. So one of the things we we really focused on, and th- and this is what we were again going back to the feedback, is that. I mentioned earlier that we're part of an MPO, so we're considered an urbanized area. Um, there's good and bad to that. So w- when you apply for this build grant, and it's the same with Tiger, there's you either apply as an urban or a rural project. Now, the benefit of doing an urban project is you can get a lot more money. Um, the benefit of a rural project is you don't need a local match, which is really nice. But if you're rural, your cap is $10 million on um, on your ask. The best part about being a rural project is the current administration is is um, going to deploy 60% of the $1.5 billion in funding to rural projects. Oh. So that's where we're kind of in a, in a kind of a strange position because even though we're part of this urbanized area, we're at, th- this project will serve people in 30 counties that's predominantly rural. And our population shows that, Amy. In, in, the, in, the, in the urbanized area, we have about 67,000 people per the 2010 census. In those 30 counties, there's about 530,000 rural residents. So it's, by and large, a rural project. So what we've had to do in the application is to point that out, that this is a technical distinction that we have here that we're urbanized, mm-hmm. but really we're, uh, we're a rural project, and we share the same... Um, characteristics is all rural areas, which is a lot of low-income people, um, challenges with access to jobs, urban centers, access to uh, you know um, uh, healthcare, educational opportunities, all those types of things, and certainly those are challenges that we see throughout Southern Illinois. So, 
that's the biggest uh, emphasis that this project has. I, I, when people ask me about this, I, I always say selfishly, it's a great, great project for Carbondale because mm-hmm. it fills a, another gap downtown and puts a lot of people on the street. But it's truly a rural project. Um, and I guess why is something like this so important, not only to Carbondale, but throughout southern Illinois? Well, it, it, so we have three regional transit services that I mentioned. And mm-hmm. um, currently, their, their routes, it's, it's considered a deviated uh, route system, right? So basically what that means is is all these guys have routes within their 18, 5, or 6 county region, mm-hmm. and they all come to Carbondale, okay? Um, but they don't have... Um, a shared facility, they don't have a common um, point where they can transfer uh, passengers between them. Luckily, all three of those transits work really well together, mm-hmm. so they've, they've been able to develop an ad hoc system where they can communicate and they can transfer people. So if you're in rural Alexander County and you have to get to Harrisburg for whatever reason, or you have to get to the cancer center that's in Williamson County, then that spans two transit systems. They can figure out how to do it. It's just really inefficient. If we get to the point where we can build a multimodal center, we'll move closer towards a fixed route regional transit system. So those routes will, can be modified to take people um, through Carbondale to other areas. The, the reality is with SIU and SIH here, a big percentage of those riders on those other three transits are coming to Carbondale to access services or health care or education at, a, at SIU. So it would only make sense to design a regional system uh, around those needs. And the city turned in the application end of July, and kind of what is the timetable moving forward? Well, if it follows the original Tiger uh, schedule, it um, they generally make decisions uh, around the end of the federal Fed's fiscal year, which is September 30. So we would expect in the next few months to get notified. Um, and then there's still a whole lot of work to do. We're only in a conceptual stage now. So if we are notified at the end of this year that we we're getting funding, uh, we would spend a big part of 2019 uh, finalizing the construction documents to bid, uh, bid the project probably early 20, and then start constructing 20, probably finish late 21. So still a long way, long road ahead, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. But the city and community partners remain optimistic about securing funding for this multimodal facility. Yeah, and it's not just the. You know, I get really excited when I talk about this, Amy, because it, and it's, I've learned more about it because it's it's a it's a capital project, it's an infrastructure project for Carbondale and for the region because it will have a lot of temporary high paying construction jobs. But it's really an economic development project mm-hmm. because. A lot of folks probably don't realize uh, how many people regionally rely on public transportation. Um, rural people s- typically spend about 7% more of their wages in transportation mm-hmm. in general um, than their urban counterparts do. Mm-hmm. Um, and we have lower incomes here. Right. So transportation is often cited as the biggest barrier to, to jobs, the biggest barrier to getting good health care. Um, one of the things I learned in the process is rides, the, the 18 county area that they're in, 6% of their riders are Medicaid trips. And so what that means is if you're a poor person and you get health care via Medicaid, um, it's a free trip to get you to a doctor. 6% of their riders are, are doing that. So um, there, there's an unbelievable need within the region to provide better opportunities for rural people, and in particular, poor rural people, to be able to access employment, education, um, health care, to improve quality of life. And and that's what this project would do long term. And um, is there anything else you'd like to, to mention about this project, about the process? It mm-hmm. has been a long road, but um, hopefully the end is in sight. Yeah, it's it's been great. It's If anybody has any interest in the real details, uh, more of the details, I should say, um, you can go to Explore Carbondale. There's a, there's a multimodal link on there, and it's got all the documents that we submitted for our grant. So it's got a much more detail in the narrative, maps, things like that, where you can see the different service areas of, of, the, of the different transits, um, job costs, um, all of our letter support, political support. I got to, to, to say, too, again, our, our local legislators have been – um, so supportive, and, 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 and they've continued to provide support. Uh, Senator Durbin and Duckworth each gave us letters again. Congressman Boss, Congressman Shimkus actually did because um, part of the service areas in his district 
all of our state legislators have been really supportive, um, as well as a number of community partners, transits. Um, so we need more and more people to know about it and know the impact, and in particular, the economic development part of it and the quality of life issues that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's not just the Carmel project. This is a southern Illinois project that will touch people in 30 counties, and um, it, it's a really big deal for the region. Great. Lots of good information, and of course, we have our fingers crossed that everything goes crossed. well. Yeah. <laughs> and we are all out of time for today, but uh, we hope you have a happy Monday, and we'll join you in next week.